At takeoff, the noise of the four Rolls-Royce engines on full afterburner rumbled through the cabin. At the controls, in the cramped and instrument-jammed cockpit, Captain Pierre Dudal. The acceleration was much stronger than any other passenger plane, and the climb angle was steeper. I dangled my notebook for a vertical reference so you could see just how steep this climb was. At 14 minutes into the flight, we approached the speed of sound. We're just about to go through the speed of sound right now. We're at Mach 0.98, just under the speed of sound. Let's see what it feels like to break the sound barrier. Mach 0.99. And Mach 1, we have just broken the speed of sound, and, and quite honestly, it uh, feels no different at all to me than when we were subsonic. Before I left New York, I got a whole bunch of promotional literature from Air France on the Concord, and I want to read you a couple of quotes from it I think you'll find interesting. It says here, our cabin staff, one purser, two stewards, and the stewardesses, have been selected with special care, taking into consideration appearance and behavior. To give you some idea about the size of the Concorde, it is not a large airplane. It's not uncomfortable, but it's rather small. The aisle width is narrow. There's a fellow here trying to get by me. And I'm about six feet, one inches tall, and I'd say there's perhaps two inches between the top of my head and the cabin roof. Now, this is going to be just a little bit indelicate, but I think you should know this about the Concorde. I'm standing right now in one of the toilets. And this is, without a doubt, the most cramped toilet I've ever seen. As I back in here, I can't even stand up straight. My head hits the ceiling. It does illustrate the rather cramped quarters. Fortunately, this uh, flight is only three and a half hours long. 47 minutes into the flight, the Mach meter reached its second big number. Mach 2, better than 1,300 miles an hour. Now, to imagine how fast we're going, if you can imagine the time it takes for my voice to leave your television set and reach your ear, we're moving through space twice that fast, physically. As our flight ended at Kennedy, we had flown at Mach 2.04, 1,380 miles an hour. We had topped 90% of the Earth's atmosphere, flying in the stratosphere at 60,000 feet. We had beaten the sun, leaving Paris at 1111 local time and arriving in New York at 849. And when we touched down, there was a spontaneous, exuberant round of applause, a celebration of our uniqueness for having shared this historic event.